I think most of people heard about the story of Noah's Ark. Even you Christian or not, even you Muslim or not, most of people will heard about that. When I heard about Noah's Ark, in the first time, I think about it just as normal story, like a normal tales that people tell each other everywhere. But when I think it deeply, it's very touch my heart. There's some big meaning behind that story. When we heard about God told Noah to build a boat and told Noah to bring all animals, each variety, you need a couple of them. Bring them to the boat. And then the world will be flood. Everything will die. When the water go down, you can start new life with animal that you have. So that's the story that I heard from the Bible. But when I think it deeply, that has a very big meaning behind that. That means God told people that, people who believe in God, if you want to survive, you need to save seas. No ark, it doesn't mean you need to build a boat. It's not a boat that you put in the water, but the meaning of the boat is your land, your place, anywhere that you can do things with it. You can turn it into a boat. And to collecting all kind of animal, that means you need to collecting all seeds or animal that become food for human in there. In the past, people don't do much farming. They grow mainly grain. But they hunt a lot. That's why they use animal as a symbol of food. But now, we eat more grain, more vegetable. So, God told human to save seeds. If we save seed, we will survive. And God said that it will be the big flood in the world. But the meaning behind a flood that I understand is maybe different from other people. I understand that God means greed. Greed is something big and heavy, something you cannot control easily. So it's compared to water. So greed flood all over the world now. So anybody who don't save seed, it's very hard to survive. What will flood the world is not water, it's greed. Greedy people is everywhere, including me. I still have it. I still have it, like everybody. So this is what ruin everything in the world. We ruin seas, we ruin natural resources, we ruin everything, even our life. This is more dangerous, more serious than water, the flooding from water. So the message from God is so big, so important. God told us to save seed. Actually, saving seed is one part of self-reliance. And in the Bible, there's a quite clear that they quite clear message from the Bible that God tell human to be self-reliant, to rely on yourself, because there's one part they say that if you need to help yourself first, and then God will help you. So, 
that's quite clear that we need to come back to be self-reliant. And saving seed is one part of self-reliance. That's what touched me, touched my heart a lot. That after I listened to this story, I think it's very important to bring into our life, to bring it into practice. So now, many people ignore it. Many people read or listen to the talk about that, but never bring into real life. So we will not get benefit from it much. No our ark is the way to survive for human now. God told us to come back to be self-reliant. I think every religious have the same teaching, have the same aim. Even in Muslim, in Islam, is have many teaching about this too. Even in Buddhism, Buddha taught the same thing. In Buddhism, Buddha said, you need to help yourself. No other people can help you. So it's quite clear. Now it's time to come back to our root, to think about what we have to do. Now it's flood everywhere. It's flooding everywhere now. It's so hard life everywhere. We have so many crises happen all over the world, everywhere. If we don't listen to the nature or listen to God, we cannot survive. We have no time to fight, to argue with anything, just come back to think about know our ark. Think about build our own boat and then we will survive. I'm not religious people but I try to understand every religious in the world. I found that all religious have the same destination, have the same aim. And then every religious facing the same problem now. That is money. In Christian or in Muslim, that's one thing that changed so much now. In the teaching, God said, don't respect other gods. That's not real God. But now, most of people respect money more than God. So that means we are not real Christian. We are not real Muslim. If we respect money more than God. In Buddhism, it's the same. Buddhism, the Buddha did not teach people to sacrifice our life to make money only. The Buddha said that money is like a poison snake. If we have money in our hand, we need to wash our mind carefully, like we have poison snake in our hand. We need to be careful like that, because it's so dangerous. It can hurt us any time. But not many Buddhist people follow the teaching of the Buddha. The same as Christian or Muslim now. God, in the Bible, they say that it's hard for rich people to get into the realm of, the, of God. It's hard like a pool 
camel to needle eyes. Is that hard? That means it's impossible. How can the camel walk through needle eyes? It's impossible. That means it's impossible for money to buy the way to God. It's impossible. In Islam, to take interest from people is sin. So, every religious have the same meaning, but they use different language. Every religious teach people to come back to self-reliant. And if you have, you can share more. Share. Share. In Buddhism, Buddhas admire a lot of millionaires. But the meaning of millionaire in Buddhism is the person who can give a lot, not the person who can own a lot. Millionaire in Buddhism means you give more to other people. You share more. That's the way we call millionaire. But now a lot of Buddhist people, they don't share. They just have, they just own it, process it. Grab everything in their hand. Don't share other people. That's what happened. But they said they are Buddhist. That's so that's very wrong. It's not real. The same with very religious, every religious now. Money take over everything. Money is the most dangerous thing for our mind. But money is useful, is important, is a tool. But whenever we don't use money as a tool, it's a problem. When I listened to the story of Noah Ark, it touched my heart a lot. So I just want to express my feeling, my understanding about the story from the Bible. Other people maybe know better than me because they have more experience, but I did not learn much, I did not do much. When I heard it, I started to think this is what I see from my perspective. I think it's important. It's important for us to come back to our roots. No matter religious you are, come back to your root. If you follow the teaching and bring the teaching back into our life, we will be the same destination. Whoever think that this religious better than this religious, that means you don't understand anything yet. You don't understand the teaching yet. So whenever you bring into real life, into practice, everybody will see the same thing. But whenever we read and listen and think, we can see different. So, it's time to be ourselves, come back to our root.